I've got the um, the list of things we're gonna we're gonna talk through. So yeah. Zane, thanks for taking some time to chat. What's um What's this all about? What are we? Well, doing? first, thanks for you reaching out. I, mean, I was pretty excited when I saw that because I've, you know, sort of had the same thing brewing in the back of my head for a while. Just like there's got to be some other accountants that can just have a conversation. And, you know, I think that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have a conversation. I think the focus for us on this sort of first round of conversations is we both have an accounting business, like accounting practice, an accounting firm, whatever we want to call it. But both of our businesses look very, very different. And the route to that business looks extremely different. We, you know, we both took a different, different path to get here. We're both focusing on extremely different areas in terms of our niche clients. And then we have very different types of business in terms of size and the way we do things. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You know, we, we touched on this a little bit in our intros, but, you know, just talking about the fact that we run very different businesses, primarily because the clientele that we're serving, they're very different. Um, so do we want to maybe spend a little bit of time talking about the differences? Like, what's the specialty that you're in? I'll share a little bit about the specialty that I'm in for our listeners. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, my history started in automotive space um, and then consumer products and then went into technology but technology products. So there was a manufacturing component as well. So I've had manufacturing in my history, basically from day one. So now I'm in the wine space, which, you know, don't tell the winery owners, it's a manufacturing process, mm -hmm. right? You're taking a raw material and you're converting it into a finished product. And there's work in progress along the way. So it is manufacturing. So we are very much focused on the wine space slash the manufacturing space. And our clientele are generally smaller wineries. I mean, you know, statistically speaking, there's 11 and a half thousand wineries in the United States. 10 and a half thousand of them produce less than 10,000 cases, which is considered a small winery. And we mostly focus on that market, but we've seen a lot of growth in the sort of 2,000 to four and a half thousand case range, the very mm -hmm. small ones. They're generally closely held family businesses where people have either got into it for passion or because they have a bit of money in their loved one. Mm. They need the help. They don't have the resources to do it themselves, which is good. You know, they should be focusing on making the wine and selling the wine, um, the things that keep them in business. And they need somebody to come in and be a full service partner. Mm. They need somebody that takes the information from source document all the way through the cycle, help them with payments, help them with collections, and then eventually give them some sort of reporting so that they can understand their business. The complexity on our side is that manufacturing process is a really long cycle. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about it, it takes a year to grow the grapes. And then most wines, you're gonna see at least six months of fermentation process. So some oh, wow. aging in a barrel or a tank. We have, you know, clients that have wines up to seven years of aging. Mm -hmm. But that inventory cycle then is eight years long. Yeah. And, you know, the complexity there is that there is the growing of the grapes and the allocation of costs there. But then once it gets into that winery, there's allocation of costs on a monthly basis to allocate overheads and labor, something that a lot of people forget about. You know, you have to include the cost of the people making the wine in the price of your wine. And if you don't, you're most likely going to get set at the wrong prices. So we do spend a lot of time on the inventory costing side. We do see it as one of our strengths. Um, you know, we come in and we've done a few cleanup projects in, in the past where we come in, there's no inventory costing being done, and we just get it done for them so they understand it. Um, sometimes it goes well, and they're like, oh, great, our prices are fine. Other times they, you know, basically, you know, close to tears because they've set their prices incorrectly and mm -hmm. because they totally forgot about labor and overheads. And we help them get that correct. And then, you know, the reporting side is very important and sort of helping them have that information so they can make better decisions. You know, should I go fully direct? Should I go distribution? What will that strategy look like? And then allow them to bring in the outsourced CFO because we sort of shy away from that work. Um, we stay away from the more strategic stuff that we, you know, we do, you know, we cross that line a little bit every now and then, but we, we generally, you know, it is such a specialized industry that they should look for outsource CFOs that have some sort of sales experience or at least working the market experience mm -hmm. because there's relationships and conversations that we as counters just can't have because we don't know how to talk the language. Mm 
Mm. That's really interesting. And as you were sharing um, kind of the, the uniqueness of your industry, it's interesting because, yes, there are plenty of differences, right? The biggest one being just the fact that you guys are largely inventory based where we're going to be we'll get into this largely service based for for my clients. But we still have um, a real focus on ensuring that labor is being properly reflected in what your true costs are. Uh, it's one of the biggest things I, I harp on all the time is I'm like, you have to be running allocations. Other how Otherwise, how are you going to know if your project is profitable? So um, interesting enough, I, I want to get into some more of that, um, call out the, the similarities and differences. But my specialty the, where we focus is software development agencies. A lot of times people hear the word software, they their mind stops and they think, oh, SaaS. It's like, well, not exactly. Like we could definitely serve SaaS pro, um, products and, and businesses, but where we really shine is with the development agencies themselves, the ones that are doing the custom software work, right? The ones that are doing the business process automation, the ones that are finding new ways, creative ways to incorporate AI into a business process or developing a custom application. Like those agencies, we really love to work with. That's kind of our, our key market. So it's largely service based, right? Like I think it's like 80 to 90% of all of the costs are the payroll. So in some sense, it's a lot less complex. Um, but in another sense, um, you know, there there can be some more complexities just in the sense that you, you need to be really fine tuned to, again, project profitability is a big, big thing. Another thing you touched on was operating cycle, right? In the winery space, you said that might be eight years depending on the winery it might be shorter than that maybe it's on average what 16 to 24 months yeah i'd say 24 months is a good estimate in terms of a, a regular winery um, right reds and whites will obviously have different aging cycles right yeah and so that's like a you know two-year period of time before things kind of come full circle where for us you know we might be looking at you know from the time that you are landing the client to the time that you actually delivered that application that might be between three to six months. So much shorter uh, time window, but also the, I guess, similar to you guys, you'd have to be working with your cash flows and making sure that things are properly financed. You know, things are just changing on a oftentimes weekly basis for software development agencies. So uh, that's a big, big thing we like to focus on in, in my space. Yeah, and you know, that 24 months that I mentioned as well is just to have a ready product. Hmm. You know, there's, there's still the sales cycle that has to come over and you know the general goal there is i got to sell it in one year because the next winter is just going to come out Ooh, good so, call. you know mm -hmm. so there that is that that portion of it and you know i think what makes my industry though it is complex on around the inventory side probably makes it a little bit simpler from a cash flow forecasting is that their years look similar in terms of cash needs right hmm. grapes are harvested at the same time every year grapes are trimmed at the same time every year. You know, there will obviously be some fluctuation to weather, but we understand that once you've gone through a cycle, we generally know what your cash flows, ups and downs are gonna look like, and it can be planned for. Where what I'm hearing from you is that it is so fluid in your yep. space, and a big project could land today and a big project could disappear tomorrow, mm -hmm. that that cash flow monitoring is even more intense because it's hard to guess what those cash flows are going to look like. Mm -hmm. Well, that and also you think about like the production capacity, you know, when, when you're dealing in the winery space, like you have somewhat of a pretty fixed production capacity, right? There's only so much land that you have at any given time that's that you yeah. can actually like be planting and, and all this stuff. For software, uh, software development agencies in particular, you do projects, you might have, again, those peaks and valleys where it's 880 dev hours for this month that you need to be able to commit to. And the next month, it might be 440. So there's a lot of variability. So when we talk about properly like growing in a way that's healthy and sustainable, a big part of that too is like capacity planning and making sure that we're not committing too much to full-time employees. If we don't have a consistent project base to, to feed them, yep. we might be looking at we need to bring on contract labor instead. And so navigating that is really important on a month to month basis for sure. Yeah. What is your focus of services for, for these agencies? Yeah. 
So we do a full, we, we try to do like a full service package, uh, right? So we we try to lead, we like to lead with that fractional CFO kind of advisory space where we're sitting in with you on those leadership calls, hopefully on a weekly basis, if you have a weekly leadership cadence. Um, and if for nothing else, at least giving you visibility to what I like to call the zero dollar date uh, and being really, really focused on how many days runway do you have before you hit zero dollars in your bank account. Um, so we, we talk a lot about cash flow forecasting. We also talk about project profitability because again, that's key. It's the only thing that we know in order to help our clients make better decisions about the types of clients they want to work with or the types of projects they want to bring on. So a lot of retrospective, but also like mid project profitability analysis is a big, big thing that we focus on, at least on a monthly basis. Um, we're also just talking about general strategy, right? Like as you have a one year, three year, five year goals and plans, what are we doing today? And then the, this next quarter and the quarter after that, what are we doing pro proactively to make and take steps towards that? You know, even though I might not be a sales and marketing expert, like I can still know the types of questions to ask and um, set the right budget so that you're properly capitalizing those initiatives. Um, those are lots of things that we like to to focus on in our engagements. Yeah, so that's like a big difference, right? You're leading with the CFO services. I'm leading with bookkeeping services. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to sell to you. Like, I want to get in there, make sure your books are as accurate as possible. They're done as consistently as possible and as timely as possible. And that's the service I want to say, sell you because I want you to have books that can be used by strategic partner. Or if you need financing or you want to sell it, those books are ready to go. You know, mm -hmm. We can just hand them over to that bank. We can hand it over to that potential investor. They can make quick decisions, ask us some questions, and, and you know, off we go. So it's a very different you know, strategy from it. And you know, part of that for me is obviously what I mentioned. We have